Hello everyone. So today we are going to see another interesting problem, the K weaker rows in a matrix. So the input given is a two-dimensional array, and we have to return the K number of weakest rows in a given matrix. So let's understand this problem with an example. So the problem statement says ones are going to be soldiers and zeros are going to be civilians. And soldiers always stand before the civilians. That is, in front, the soldiers will be standing. After that, only zeros will start in every row. So now we are going to return what are the k weakest rows in a given matrix. So how are we defining the matrix rows are weakest? So if a row is having less number of soldiers than other row, then that row is considered to be weakest. What if two rows having same number of soldiers then in that case whichever rows are in front are going to be considered as weakest than the rows coming behind so in this example manually if you see the first row is having two soldiers and the second row is having four third row is having one fourth row is again having two soldiers and fifth row is having five soldiers so obviously we can take away five because there are many number of soldiers and four because there are many number of soldiers now we are rest with two one two these three rows first we can identify our one is the weakest because this is the lesser number of soldiers we ever had so one is of row two so first we are going to add two so now we have left with two other rows that is zero through and fourth row with two soldiers so in this case if we have to return only two number of weakest rows we have to now finalize whether to choose uh, zero row or fourth row to add into our result here what do we choose we choose zero row because both of them are having same number of soldiers but zero is in the front but four is in the back so zero is going to be the weakest so we add 0 to the list and we return the output. So how are we going to approach this? Whenever I see k maximum, k weakest, k minimum, the first thing that hit my mind was heap. We already saw many min heaps and max heap problems in our channel and I'll provide similar problems in description. So here again we are going to use max heap to get our hands done with this problem. So let's see how we're we going to approach this. The approach is going to be simple. I'm going to have a heap whose size is going to be k. That is, in our case, it is going to be 2 here. So now let's start putting our rows into the heap. So our first row that is that will be identified as 0. So now I'm going to put my row number and the number of soldiers available in the row. So every time I'm going to put this values to my heap, my heap is going to identify which is the maximum, which is, which is the maximum out of all and throw it away. For example, our size is going to be two. Now we have entered one row into our heap. It still can hold one more row. So next moving on to our second row. So our second row is having that is, it is identified by 1 and the number of soldiers are 4. So now the capacity becomes 2. So now we are going to enter our third row. Here our third row is going to be 2, comma 1 soldiers 1. In this case, our heap size is going to be 2. It cannot hold 3 elements. So we have to push one element out of the heap. So which element are we going to push out? In this case, we are checking the second value that is the number of soldiers out of all three which is the weakest is our solution so we have to keep minimums inside and throw maximums outside so here if you consider one and two are our minimums and four is the maximum value so now we are going to throw out the row one which is having four soldiers and that is strong now we have thrown our row with four soldiers and we are moving on to our next row. Our next row is going to 
have two soldiers and the row number is three. So now again our heap had become of size three but it has to hold only two members so we have to push out the maximum. We are checking the second index it is having value one two two. So clearly one is the lowest so we are going to keep one. So what which one do we delete from zero comma two and three comma two. Here comes the discussion. So both are having same number of soldiers. So we are going to identify which is the weakest. How do we identify which is the weakest? We got to check the row number. So the row number zero is less than three. In that case, zero throw is in front. The chances of getting more damage and our weakest is going to be zero than three. So we are going to take away three because three is strongest out of zero and three. So we are taking away the third row. So we removed our third row. Now moving on to our fourth row. We are going to enter our fourth row, fourth row with index 4 and soldiers 5. Now again the size becomes 3. We have to push or throw one row out. In this case 5 is the maximum. So with that is the strongest. We are going to take away 4 comma 5. So now our heap is done. And we have left with two values that is 0 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. So the 0 and 2 rows are going to be the weakest top two rows in a given array. So now it is asking us to return the weakest row in order. So which is the weakest out of these two? Which is having one soldier is the weakest and two soldier is the next weakest. So we are going to return the row 2 first and then the row 0 next. So 2 comma 0 is going to be the output of this problem. So now how are we going to approach this programmatically? So whenever we come across heap problems, our priority queue comes for help. Yes, so we are going to have a priority queue. So our priority queue is going to hold integer arrays where the integer array represent the row and the number of soldiers in a given matrix. So i comma j where i is the row and j is the number of soldiers. So in this case every time it is going to put in priority queue it is gonna ask which is the maximum. So it is gonna uh, arrange our numbers based on the second value first. If it if the second value is lesser, is it is going to put that value in front. If it is greater, it is going to put that value in back. If both are having same number of soldiers, then it is going to have i, that is the index of the row, and compare the index. Whichever is less, it is going to put first. Whichever is more, that it is going to put next. In this way, our priority queue is going to hold the values so that we can form, form our heap. So let's start with our first row that is 0 comma 2 because 0 throw with two soldiers is going to put first and then moving on to a second row which is 1 comma 4 where 1 represents the row number and 4 is number of soldiers. Here it compares first with the second value. They are not equal so they just, they just compare which is the highest. 4 is the highest so 4 is taking the position 1 and 0 comma 2 taking the position 2. Now moving on to our third row which is 2 comma 1 where 2 represents the row and 1 soldiers in the second row. So now it compares whether 1 is greater than any of the numbers in Q. 1 is not greater so it is going to take the third position. And now our Q becomes of size 3 but our K is going to be of size 2. In this case we have to have only two elements in our queue. So if our queue exceeds the size, then we are going to pull the elements from queue. Pull one element from the queue until the size is greater. Now this queue becomes of size 2. So we pulled one element and two elements still there in our queue. As we pulled our second row with four soldiers, let's move on to our fourth row. So our fourth row is having that is row number three with two soldiers. So now it is going to compare whether two is greater than any of the value. In this case, 
one is lesser than two, but zero row is having two soldiers again. Zero row, third row is having two soldiers. In this case, it compares the index that is three and zero. In this case, three is greater, so three gets the first place. So here, if you see, the size again becomes three, which is greater than two. In this case, whole the front element. So now our row three will be removed. So finally, moving on to our last row, which is of size four. Sorry, row four with five soldiers. So here it compares whether five is greater than any other soldiers. Yes, it is greater than all the soldiers present in the queue. So in this case, it takes the first place. So now our queue is again greater than two. So we are going to poll the front element. So we are polling four comma five. And we don't have any more rows left in our matrix. In this case, our priority queue is done with two values, 0, 2 and 2, 1. Here, if you observe, 0, 2 is quite stronger than 2, 1 because 2, 1 is having only one soldiers and 0, 2 is having only having two soldiers. In this case, our weakest out of that is second row and then comes the zero row. So what are we going to do? We are going to have a result array in that of size k. So here our k is 2, so it is of size 2. We are going to first add 0 at the last index of the result array. And then moving on to the next, we are going to poll 2 and add. So here is our result. Thus priority q helped us construct our max heap and we finally arrived at the result. So let's see how are we are going to code it. As we saw examples in detail, let's directly go to code. As I said, we are going to have our priority queue first, which is going to hold integer array. So now we are going to write a comparator where we are going to put i, j that is a, b where it compares the second value that is the number of soldiers we are going to put in priority queue. If the soldiers are going to be equal then it compares the first value that is a row number. So we are checking whether a soldier value is going to be equal then then it is going to put our values in ascending order or descending order based on the row numbers. If not, it is going to arrange based on the number of soldiers. So once that is done, we are going to iterate through the rows. So here, once we iterate through the row, we are checking if the value is equal to 1, then count j. That is, we are counting number of soldiers here. j denotes the soldiers. And this is going to point at the size of the row columns. And you can change this step alone into binary search because we have a key here that soldiers will be aligned first before civilians that is we will be having all ones before we get our zeros so once we encounter a zero we don't find a one again so j 
just to minimize our time complexity we can implement this iteration or counting of soldiers using binary search but i'm not going to show that as binary search is very simple and you can implement it if you want so once we counted the soldiers i'm going to put that into my priority queue I comma J. So this will be aligned based on the numbers. So once that is done, I'm gonna check if my priority queue exceeds the size of K. If that is the case, I'm gonna poll the elements, which means the higher values will be in the front of the queue and lower values will be in the back of the queue so once it reaches its size it is going to push away the higher values and hold only the weaker values that is how our priority queue will be now ended with only the k weakest rows in the queue so now that queue will be based on the number of sol sol soldiers and it will be in ascending order but we have to return the most weakest and then the ne least next weakest and next so we are going to put the values in reverse order into our output for that our output has to be in the form of integer array so i'm simply going to declare an integer array result of size k because our elements are going to be of size k So here we are just going to add the i's that is the row numbers alone because we need the row numbers as our output not the number of soldiers. So I'm just from q I'm adding only row numbers to my q in the reverse order from k if it k is 2 then k 1 sorry 2 1 and uh, 0th position will be holding the values in reverse. Finally return our result array. So yes it is done let's run. Yes, it runs fine and this actually runs in big O of rows into column plus log k. The log k comes from inserting and taking the values in priority queue and the rows and columns represent R and C here. So you can still reduce this C size to log C by implementing this line using binary search. So let's submit. So yes, the solution is accepted. Thanks for watching. If you do like it, like my explanation, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.